Another six green steps. Yeah. Does you want them? Another half million, you can get that motorbike you've always wanted. <laughs> you all right, Dad? Your Uncle George is dead. Oh, God. Another bleeding funeral. <laughs> That's a nice thing to say. Well, we've had a belly full, haven't we? Six in the past two years. They're dropping like flies, your brothers and sisters. <laughs> well, there was 14 of us. It's the law of averages. Some of them is bound to drop off. Yeah. How are you feeling? <laughs> Don't you worry, mate. I'll get me telegram from the Queen. Don't you bother. Yeah, I'll have to ask when you're going. <laughs> oh, God, I hate these bleeding stepto funerals. It doesn't seem a matter how many of them go, there's always the same number there. <laughs> they drop like flies and they breed like rabbits. <laughs> Well, we're a very close-knit family. Get out of it. You only see each other at funerals. Five hours of sheer naked hatred and everything. He said, I could have his watch and give it to me. Who looked after him only when you knew he was going? I'm not going for all that again. It's obscene. We are going and that's the end of it. <sighs> when is it? Friday. Oh, that's marvellous. That's my yoga night gone for the chop. <laughs> Usual place, I suppose. Of course. Steptoes have been buried there since 1842. Yeah, I know they have. You could build a council estate on the ground they take up. <laughs> Who was Uncle George, anyway? My eldest brother. I don't remember him. Yeah, there's been so many of them. Ah, oh, you wouldn't remember him. You haven't seen him since you was three months old. What? He was your godfather. I thought godfathers are supposed to look after your religious upbringing and buy you presents on your birthday and stuff. Yeah, that's right. That's why you never saw him. <laughs> now, we made a mistake in choosing him. Tight as a gnat's chuff he was. <laughs> you know, he was the only man I ever knew Brought his hair on from the barbers. Right. <laughs> Used to stuff cushions with it. I think he must be worth a few bob, did Yeah, he hasn't been out of that house for 30 years. Never went anywhere, never spent anything. Oh, it's going to be a big deal, this is. They'll all be there. Hey, what do you say? We pass this one up, eh? I mean, you don't really want to go, do you? You don't like them, but don't like you. I mean, you said so often, you know? Exactly. And that's just why I want to go. I shall see them go one after the other. <laughs> That's the only bit of enjoyment I get these days. <laughs> Besides, I want to be there for the share out. If there's anything going on, I'm having it. Oh, God. You, you're as bad as the rest of them. He borrowed 25 quid from me in 1927 to make a new life, he said. Go to Australia. The nearest he got to Sydney was the dog and duck at Wood Green. <laughs> and I never got me money either. As far as I'm concerned, I'm entitled to the first pickings of anything he's left. If I don't get there, I've had it. Because as soon as they put him away, they'll be through that house like a plague of locusts. There'll be nothing left. They'll sweep it clean, down to the floorboards. You'll never realise anybody ever lived there. <laughs> God, isn't it touching? But well, doesn't it get you right here? Eh? What a family. They made a the bleeding Borgias look like the archers. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if, if they were honest about it. But it's the hypocrisy I can't understand. Hello, Ted. Hello, me. Hello, Jesse. It's a sad occasion. The lovely fella. Salt of the earth. One of the best. You'll be sorely missed. <laughs> They'll all be round here, all crying their eyes out. Of course they will, that's half the fun. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have a funeral without a few tears, it's not right. I suppose Potty Ada will be there, lifting up her skirts to the vicar. <laughs> She's harmless, Harold. Besides, she is your auntie. I don't know. There's some dodgy strains in this family. Well, I'm not looking after her again. I got lumbered with her last time. In the same car. Oh, God. 
She was effing and blinding all the way up a gold hot road. <laughs> I mean, she must be looking on 60 and she still dresses like Carmen Miranda. <laughs> oh, it's not her fault, Harold. She went a bit funny in 1940. Her world came to an end when I said never come back from Dunkirk. They come back all right, he just never went home. <laughs> He's up in Newcastle, we all know that. Why not somebody tell her to pull out Kel? <laughs> Don't be cruel, Harold. She's better off as she is. I suppose Uncle Nobby will be there. The Malcolm Muggeridge of the family. <laughs> I suppose he'll get me in a corner and lecture me on the meaning of life and death and how we must all search for God. And then he'll tap me for a fiver and be straight round a boozer before Alice sees him. I want a word said against young Nobby. He's the only one I've any time for. He has a lot to put up with, with Alice. How would you feel if you heard that none of your five kids was your own? <laughs> no wonder he turned to God. He's very religious when he's sober. He was one of Billy Graham's first converts in the Albert Hall. He got up on that stage and he told the entire audience his problems. And when he finished, Billy Graham said, he said, take courage, son, take. Courage. Yeah. He's been bleeding drinking it ever since. <laughs> oh, well. I'm telling you, Dad, if you insist on me going... Of course you're going. You'll have to go. All your cousins will be there. All right. But I am not wearing a black suit. I shall wear an armband. You are wearing a black suit and like it. I'm not having you showing me up in front of the family. But I've worn a black suit the last 16 times. But it's out of date. Well, you're going to a funeral, not a fashion parade. But Daddy's got turnips. Well, cut the bloody things off. <laughs> you are wearing a black suit, black socks, black shoes, black tie, white shirt and a bowler hat. I'm not wearing a bowler hat. <laughs> It's half an hour to kick off. <laughs> We're not a free gun by the time you get there. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm ready. Come on. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, can't we go out separately? <laughs> we look like a couple of pox doctors' clerks. <laughs> Let's get it over. Did you get the wreath? No. I thought we'd nick a wreath off one of the graves as we went in. Harold, <laughs> Harold, you can't do that. Well, of course I've got a wreath. Did you put a message on it? What do you want a message on it for? He can't read it. He's dead. <laughs> it's not for him, it's for the others. Now, nobody will know where it's come from. I knew I should have done it myself, wasting all that money. Oh, come on, hurry up. The car's outside. Car? I thought the car's left from the house of the deceased. I'm not going on a bus dressed like this. <laughs> I'm buying a car to take us. What have you got? A mustard yellow drophead with wire wheels. <laughs> you haven't, Gerald. We can't go to a funeral in a racing car. Well, it's not the going that's important. It's the coming back, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you want to be first back uh, from there to be in time for the reading of the will, don't you? I mean, the others won't hang about, mate. When the instant the vicar closes the book, it'll be a mass racing start back to the house. Vroom, 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 vroom. It'll be half a dozen limousines airing over the flyover. Why, 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 why? It's like one of them land grabs in a cowboy film. <laughs> what a degrading spectacle. Come on, let's get it over with. I am not going to a funeral in a yellow sports car. Oh, damn it, a daft. I've had an ordinary black family saloon. You've got no sense of humour, have you? Now, come on. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you doing? I'm crying. <laughs> what for? Some of the neighbours might be looking. <laughs> yeah. Blimey, they're at it already. I'm surprised they didn't have a catalogue printed. <laughs> Here, that's mine. <laughs> Hello, Albert. Oh, I thought it was George's. I shouldn't think he's got anything left, does he? <laughs> oh, no. We're still sticking to the rules. Nothing goes till he goes. 
The wages of sin is death. We're all doomed. What well, right, Uncle Nobby? He's off again. I'm a yid and he's a fun Oh, God, turn it in, Nobby. Fill his glass, somebody. Oh, drink up. Yeah, Nobby, good, good health. Good health. <laughs> Hello, Albert. Hello, Arthur. That's a very sad occasion for us all. Yeah. Oh, I suppose we'll get over it. You know, Harold? Yes, of course. Hello, Harold. Hello, Uncle Arthur. Yeah, the last time we met was uh, Frieda's interment, or uh, was it Bob's? I can't remember. I lose track. <laughs> Frieda was the last one. Yes, that's right, Frieda, yes. So Bob was the uh, the typing. Yep, well, I expect you can deal with the drink like the rest of us to help us get through the day. I'll have a brown ale. Scotch and ginger. Elsie? Yeah, yes? Oh, that's it, a brown ale and a scotch and ginger, please. Brown and a scotch, right. You're in charge again, then, Arthur. Yeah, the family have asked me to look after all the arrangements. You've had plenty of practice, haven't you? <laughs> yes, yes, sadly. I should have thought you'd have been training somebody else up. Who's going to look after you when you go? <laughs> Let's hope that won't be too soon. Here you are. Scotch and ginger. That's yours. They are, Uncle Albert. Help yourself. And the sausage rolls is over there. <laughs> well, this is a very significant occasion today. Oh, yeah? Why is that, then? It's the first bleeding drink I've ever had on it. <laughs> Mind your back. <laughs> How's things down at the bus, Depil? Oh, I mustn't grumble. <laughs> did he leave a will? Oh, God. <laughs> yes, he did. We'll be reading that when we come back. Is it worth hanging about for? Well, I'm sure we'll all be pleasantly surprised. He was quite comfortably off, you know, was George. He was entitled to be. He never spent anything. <laughs> did he say anything about that? 25 quid had off me in 1927. Well, I've no idea. I haven't read it. The solicitor handed it to me this morning, and I'm not at liberty to open it until we come back from the interment. Well, Arthur, you've done him proud. Oh, thank you, Ted. Yes, it's going to be a nice little send-off. <laughs> yes, the co-op do a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting the divvy, then? <laughs> that is a very tasteless remark, Albert. So it is you, is it? Look, I've had a great deal of personal expense. I'm entitled to the divvy. The insurance policy did not cover the entire cost of the interment, you know. It was 93. How long have you had to pay in? Look, Albert, the cost of dying has risen quite considerably since George took that policy out. Now, look, I've got a detailed list of my expenses, and you will find that I personally am £2.45 pence out of pocket. Oh, well, you can't make a profit on them all, can you? <laughs> you did very well out of Auntie Frieda's. I beg your pardon. How dare you? Oh, come off it. We had a whip round for the flowers. We gave you a pound each. Where'd the flowers come from? From your garden. That's where they come from. <laughs> I'll let you have them cheaper than you would have got them from the shops. I should think so. It was on their last legs. Yeah, my blooms are the best in Acton. I got a great deal of trouble rearing them. I win prizes every year. That was on their last legs. It was a toss-up who was dead of them or Auntie Frieda. <laughs> Graceful. And going down Minerva Road, a light breeze sprung up. There wasn't a petal left on them by the time we got to the cemetery. <laughs> Embarrassing it was. Poor old Frieda laying there under a great pile of stalks. <laughs> the rest of the family are quite happy with my organisation. Well, I'm not. Well, do I take it, Albert, that you do not want me to arrange your funeral? What? I wouldn't let you anywhere near his funeral. I'll take care of him. I know exactly what I'm going to do with him. <laughs> And it worked out for years. Arrows. When he goes, he goes in style. It's going to be the best funeral this family's ever seen. Money, sorry, you won't be there to see it. Harold, <laughs> don't keep on talking about my funeral. You know it upsets me. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I just wanted you to know, but I'm not letting any of this lot get their grasping, greedy little ends on you. I mean, look at them. It's like feeding time down a vulture house. Yeah, you can keep your eyes off her that. He promised me that years ago. Oh, no, he didn't. Them two's out of again. Who looked after him? Only when you knew he was going. You're not going to have it. You're not even family. I beg your pardon? I've been in this family for 25 years. You've only started coming round here in the last Excuse couple of months. Girls, stop squabbing. Let's get a death for all of us. Come on. 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 Come on.
See anything you fancy? Me, for instance? <laughs> anything? Forget it, Dad. You don't stand a chance here. They're professional tomb robbers. <laughs> what do you reckon to the two oil paintings? Flampants. The, uh, Persian carpet? Belgian cotton. <laughs> if you're really interested, the only worthwhile thing here is that porcelain figurine on the mantelpiece. It's a lovely piece. Hustle emojis, that is. 18th century. Put your bowler hat over it. Position. <laughs> <laughs> hello, uh, Harold, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's oh, right. Definitely yeah. artist, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Sad occasion, isn't it? Yeah. Heartbreaking. Hello, Uncle Albert. Oh, hello. Have a good shuffle round, have you? Me? No, no, I haven't. Well, the best thing is that porcelain figurine on the mantelpiece. All right? Mm. Yeah, I will give you the house room. Woolies Repro. No, I wouldn't bother with that. That's 18th century. Look, mate, I know what I'm talking about. I'm in the business. Well, so am I. I've got a stall on the Port Bella Road. You were window cleaning last time I heard. Yeah, well, there's no guilt in that, is there? The Mose, that is. Second call there. 18th century. See? I told you you should have put your hat over it. He'll have it away now. That's that half a Nagus on his program. <laughs> the whole bleeding country's experts now. <laughs> I'm gonna get a drink. Hello, Albert. Oh. Hello, Minnie. He didn't suffer, you mm. know. Didn't he? No, went out like a light. Went the way he wanted to, with his boots on. <laughs> I don't expect he's got them now. Well, he was 93, <clears throat> you can't complain. I suppose you'll be the next to go, Albert. <laughs> now, that's not funny, Minnie. I've years to go yet. Got your eyes on anything? Mind your own business. Only thing worth having is that porcelain figurine on the mantelpiece. <laughs> <clears throat> you don't recognise me, do you, Harold? You do have the advantage of me. I've been in your bed many times. <laughs> Beg your pardon? My mum used to leave me down your house when she worked at the dog trap. You're not little Caroline? That's right. Alice's youngest. Oh, blimey. That must have been 20 years ago. You, you was only about three years old. Well, she wouldn't leave you down there now. No, no, Uncle Harold. Yeah, I'm not your uncle. I'm your cousin. Oh, that's all right then, isn't it? <laughs> what are you doing after the funeral? A friend of mine's got a little rave up at her pad. Interested? Is your mother here? She's upstairs going through the linen cupboard. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, isn't it? I mean, cousins. Oh, yeah, no bother. We're well removed. At the moment. <laughs> Will you pick me up? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, what time? Oh, well, I've got to bring my mum back here for the share out. Mind you, that won't take long. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing worth having that That porcelain figurine, figurine on the mantel. <laughs> Six o'clock? Yeah, fine. See you later. <laughs> You want to keep away from that? Well, what's it got to do with you? That's Alice's girl. That's all right, cousins, it's all right. Yeah, but none of them is nobbies, I told you that. Well, that makes it even better, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, we don't know. It could be any of us. <laughs> <laughs> what a bleeding family. <laughs> Everybody, the hearse has arrived. 
Uh, Elsie, dear, could you clear these uh, glasses yes, and bottles yes, off for the uh, Uncle George? Let me get on the move. Right. Uh, men, could you give him a quick rub over with the mansion house, please? <laughs> now, could I have the four Paul bearers? Uh, the four godchildren, I think. That would be nice. He always yes. enjoyed the company of young people. Yes, now, come on, lads. Let's have you up nice and gentle, eh? I'm sorry, that's right, up. Steady, we go. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll take them. Tell me. They all turn the same way. Now, back up. Back up a bit more. A bit more, and a bit more. Come on now. Come on. Back up. No, this way. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> nice and easy, and don't drop him. Oh, cold chap! You was bleeding while going off without me, wasn't you? No, I can do it. We were not going without you. Yes, you bleeding well was. <laughs> no, we were not, Ada. And this is a funeral, and we don't want any swearing. Call that? Bleating and swearing. Wait till I get to the cemetery. Okay, dear. Look, dear, we don't want any scenes this time. Well, if she's going, see, she's got her knickers on. <laughs> you mind your own business. I've got me drawers on, don't you? <laughs> they don't come off as often as yours. <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do I mean? You had a lovely bleeding war, didn't you? All them Canadians! Oh, 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 Mate, right, Dave, is this? Hey, Jerry, go and get the police. What about the will? Have they nicked that too? No, I've got the will. Oh, thank God for that. Perhaps we'll still get something then. Good help. Did you tell us how much has he left? Yeah, come on, help me, help me. Don't know it. You don't want to stay for this, dear. Come on, let's oh, get out of here. Stop it. him, mate. I want that 25 quid he borrowed off me. Here we are, the last will and testament of George Nightingale Steptoe. Yes. Come on. I, George Nightingale Steptoe, yes. being of sound. Body and mind. Crawley must have written that in 1928. <laughs> <laughs> do, do hereby make my last will and testament to the Stepto family. Yes. If everything has gone to plan, you are now standing in an empty house. <laughs> you are no doubt wondering where everything has gone. Well, I've sold it. Mm -hmm. I arranged for it to be collected whilst you were at the funeral. So that none of you greedy... <laughs> <laughs> so-and-so's uh, could get your thieving hands on it. The money I got for it, along with the rest of my estate, a man of £1,527, I divide equally between... Yes, 
RSPCA and the Battersea Dog Zone. <laughs> you will find a tray of drinks already poured out to help you get over the shock. Good luck and see you all soon. <laughs> Please, on this very solemn occasion, I would like to propose a toast. I ask you all to charge your glasses and drink to the health of George Nightingale, the only step to I ever knew with a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't touch it after all I'd done for him. No, would I? He was always a bleeding, vindictive old stinker. I don't know. Yeah. I've never been so insulted in all my life. I'm not staying in this house another minute. No. Well, nobody's going to see me at the graveside, I'm telling you. Think Come you on, this to me and I look after like a daughter. I tell you. When I think of all the money I wasted going around with a yeah. bus to see it. No, I never but... expected anything oh. from myself, but I thought he'd have left his granddaughter. So. Oh. Wages of sin is dead. And we're doomed that a father got gonna... oh, Good health. <laughs> I enjoyed that. That was worth coming for, that was. <laughs> You're not upset, are you? No. Oh, I expected him to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Have a drink to him? Yeah. Why not? Pity to waste it. Uncle George? George. Oh, come on. Show a bit of respect. Take your help. <laughs> you crafty old devil. <laughs> Step to the klepto. Should be worth that twenty-five pounds he had off me. Well, cheers, George. Better luck next time. <laughs>